Paul. Hey. I'm going to mute everybody. Please don't take offense. Can unmute now, Paul. And welcome everybody to uh, Paul Hederman's uh, meeting on the 12 step reflections. My name's John, I'm alcoholic. And uh, this is not an AA meeting. It's, it's uh, Paul's take on, uh, you know, from our literature in the 12 steps, the big book, 12 and 12, and et cetera. And uh, we'll start with the reading today. Um, Paul, this is from the 12 and 12 on step seven and uh, on page 72. It's a pretty interesting piece, man. It starts off, seldom do we look at character building as something desirable in itself. Something we could, something we could, we would like to strive for whether our instinctual needs were met or not. We never thought of making honesty, tolerance, and true love of man and God the, da the daily basis of living. This lack of anchorage to any permanent values, this blindness to the true purpose in our lives produced another bad result. For just so long as we were convinced that we could live exclusively by our own individual strength and intelligence, for just that long was a working faith and a higher power impossible. This was true even when we believed God existed. We could actually have earnest religious beliefs which remained barren because we were still trying to play God ourselves. As long as we placed self-reliance first, a genuine reliance upon a higher power was out of the question. That basic ingredient of all humility, the desire to seek and do God's will, was missing. For us, the process of gaining a new perspective was unbelievably painful. It was only by repeated humiliations that we were forced to learn something about humility. It was only at the end of a long road marked by successive defeats and humiliations and the final crushing of our self-sufficiency that we began to feel humility as something more than a condition of groveling despair. And with that, Paul, I'm going to turn it over to you. And uh, it's all yours, buddy. On you, yeah, you good? Good. Thank you, John. Uh, but people, I think that 12 by 12 was written like 12 or 15 years after the big book. And it was more uh, Bill's view of the program after being involved with it for so many years. So when you read it, it has a different take or a feel than some of the big book. To me, the big book was a download, really from somewhere and uh but this is describing really uh that the uh the basis the perhaps the better way which is trusting the infinite rather than the finite self and you can be trying to trust the infinite in great trust in the finite self so they're trying to point out something that maybe at first we have no idea what's going on. Then when someone says your head's playing God or you're, you're playing God, you actually get it. So more has been revealed. And what we're trying to do here is to take another further step back and see you're not that which is playing God. Because if you see the playing God from what's playing God, follow this, please. This is a... Uh, this is an important vision in a certain way. If you come to the to the agreement of when people are sharing that you are playing God, your head, but you are playing God, and it says you have to stop playing God, unbeknownst to us, we may still be in the act of being identified as that which is playing God. And therefore, we try to stop playing God, which is just more playing God, yeah? So this, it's like, uh, it's rainy, there's a puddle, and then there's a bigger puddle. We're trying to point out the bigger puddle. But first you have to see the puddle, which is, I hopefully it's going to happen with you, or it already has, and it's become a basis of your life that you've recognized your role in things in this life. You've seen your role in things, instead of the complete, preoccupation in other people's role in your things yeah i hope that wave has caught you and has t taken you somewhere or actually just drowned you i hope in a way and then when that happens 
then you see something else's role. Yeah. But first, in a way, you have to see your role in things and you have to admit all this stuff. And then there's a recognition it's not you. And that's the real freedom. It's not the freedom is another is not another venture or journey you have to go on to try to be free as that which has been playing God. You see you're not playing God. Yeah, that is the, the secondary freedom. It's not freedom as, it's freedom from. Yeah. So basically, there's, there's an identif identification as that which is playing God. So that which is playing God tries to play a nicer God, yeah? Or a more beneficial God or a more compassionate God. And people, after living under that uh, pretension, they come to some kind of suspicious feeling. Something's not right. Yeah. Because the fact is, it's still that which is playing God that's trying to play God in a different manner now. Yeah. And the point is, is not to keep trying to stop playing God as that which is playing God. The point here we're humbly sharing is to see you're not that which is playing God. It has a completely different effect than, all right, They've described that I'm playing God. I've got to stop playing God. But at first, I've got to start playing a better God. And now I'm going to do this and do that. But it's still playing God. Yep. So that's fine. That's the that's the beginning. And as it said here, that reading, the failures of that which is playing God, trying to become a better, nicer God player. Yeah. The failures of that is the great success. So that you'll take another step back and see you're not that. Yeah. You'll see you're not that. So you go through, okay, I've been a bad God player. I'm going to become a good God player. And I have a way of life and I'm not drinking and using. And so I can become a good God player. Yeah, great, great. But my feeling, there's still the bondage of self going on there. So the next step with the C, not to become a better God player, but see you're not that which is playing God. And that's where the real faith goes into the infinite, because there's still a lot of faith in the finite self. Yeah, it's not. There's still a lot of it captured in the finite self. And it just explained that if you want to read it again in the 12 and 12, that's what he was explaining. Yeah. You can't surrender as self. Yeah, you have to, you surrender self. Self is an activity that's not of us. So there's a surrendering of self. What does that look like? There's a loss of interest in it. You don't try to lose interest in it. By recognizing it's not you, there's a loss of interest in it. I swear. Just like, if you were interested in a conversation in the other room and you were really trying to have x-ray hearing to hear what the person you wanted to hear say, which is, I really, I like that guy, Paul, you know, I'd like to go out with him or something. And then as soon as I hear that person say, I like Matthew and I'm not Matthew, I lose interest in the whole conversation because it's not about me. Yeah. There's no effort to lose interest in self. There's incredible effort if self tries to lose, to lose interest in self <laughs> because he can't do it. Yeah. So if it's if you're sweating and going on like that, maybe in the beginning that's appropriate. But if you're still lifting heavy weights for after a long period of time, something's off. Yes. This should be an easier, softer way meaning easier and softer. Yeah. So here I am. I'm not saying if you're at the first point, don't jump to the fourth point. But if you're if if you've been led to a certain level point, then you can see even further. And maybe instead of trying to whip the God player into better shape, you realize you're not it. Yes. And to me, that's when uh, a large amount of faith leaves the finite self and moves to the infinite. And your life will show it. 
maybe not the outside, but how you travel through it. Yeah. Yeah. This is what we're sharing. And then it, we're, and it doesn't matter my target. It's how, what's using the whole events target. Yeah. So, yeah, if you have no idea that there's something playing God, it's great to finally see, even if it's called you playing God. Because then obviously you have a distinction. There's something that we vaguely feel or sense as God, and I'm playing it, yeah? And I'm not God, all right? That's great. But if you, if that if that produces its own problems, the next step is to see, all right, I'm not that which is playing God. I don't want to hear the message, you got to quit playing God as that which is playing God, because it's going to do a lot of shit. Yeah, I want to hear it from I'm not that. And then I don't do anything and things change drastically. Because I've lost interest in that which is playing God. Therefore, obviously, what actually happens is there's a gaining interest in that which is God, let's say. But you can't gain interest in God as that which is playing God. It's going to be more interest in that which is playing God. I hope you see it, because we trip over it all the time. And I figure if you, we just keep sharing it week after week, you're going to see it. And when you see it, uh, you'll find out, you know, I hope it's going to produce a traveling lighter through this event called Living. Yeah, I do. It has here, uh, in spite of my bad or good intentions. It's just, uh, yeah. So I think that's what a lot of it, of what it was saying in that reading, how there's still faith in self concerning God. And therefore, it's not a real surrender. And we haven't really turned it all over because we're still relying on that which has failed us. Yeah. How is, does that reliance look like? It can look like that you're taking yourself to be that. Yeah. That would be a very high form of reliance on something that's called that something you is pretty fucking relying on it. Yeah. So. And what I love, if you stay sober and you just live in, in this design of for living, let it imprint its idea of living on you instead of you trying to give it, it the meaning it has. Yeah. Just stay on the operating table. Don't get up and don't play doctor. And then a lot gets revealed. Yeah. And the fun is, I don't know what's going to get revealed for you. I don't. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to try to describe it because then you would don't, you'd have a con like a conceptual like policeman's drawing about the thief. It's not going to, you're not going to recognize it because when you look in the mirror, mirror, that's the thief, so to speak. So this, I'd much rather just present the invitation and then let it take its course in you. Yeah. And obviously something's working because I see a lot of people keep coming back. So fantastic. Yeah. So. The whole thing, in my feeling, is based on faith. To tell the truth where faith lies in your life now, and just tell the truth about how, where you see it, and then just sit and let what see what happens. Yeah. And I bet you this faith is going to move from the preoccupation with self as self to something, some other condition. Yeah. Let's call it centered, not self centered. Yeah. And you're going to you'll feel the effects. And that's much better than reading about a description of the effects. It's much more convincing when you feel it, when you feel like you're traveling lighter. That goes a long way. So, hey, perhaps there's a better way. What is it? Trusting the infinite rather than finite self. Let's tell the truth about trusting finite self. Yeah. 
when the trust and finite self gets moved, your life is going to look different. Yeah. Yeah. If the self is thinking it's the one that's moving it, your life is going to look pretty much the same because self is running the show still. Yeah. Yeah. We have the eyes and the ears and the sense to discern it after a while. You'll feel like what's directing you. It's almost like the horse knows the, the quality of the jockey after a while. You, you've you been ridden by that old jockey for a long time. You know what it's like to have that thing occupying you. And you'll get to know what it's like to have the new employer occupy you. Yeah, you will. And then your condition when you're being occupied by the new employer will be completely different than con the condition when you felt you were taken over by that parasite. Yeah. Not based on the parasite or the thing that took you over, but you. Because if you stay in AA, you know it works. Yeah. It delivers the goods. I mean, a lot of people are actually living miracles in this Zoom. There's no way in hell that if your life was a was if Las Vegas was giving the odds to your life that you would have ever won. And yet here we are. So, yep. All right, uh, John. Thanks, Paul. Anybody has a question or a comment or uh, would like to come in and just share? Use the raise hand feature. Uh, go to your taskbar at the bottom. Click on reactions, and it'll show you a little yellow hand. You can raise, and we'll uh, invite you in to, to share it. So. Hey, John. Yeah, Paul. What we're saying here is when something hears, you got to quit playing God and reacts to that. It's that which is playing God. Yeah. Absolutely, man. You know, for years, I, I never saw that. I, I was the guy who said, yeah, I'm going to quit playing God. Yes. And, and never saw that, you know, that I was telling what well, to stop playing God, you know, was, was that which was playing God. Not, you know, I was identified as that as me, you know, yes. and you know, the, yeah, it's like, you know, you talk, like you say, you use the uh, analogy of the um, Japanese handcuffs, man. You know, I fought for years, man, you know, entertain, you know, how, how do you stay sober for, you know, 27 years and, you know, you still feel like blowing your brains out after 27 years, you know? That, you know, that's the kind of suffering that identifying as that which is playing God and as that which defeats you and not knowing it, you know, that uh, that's brutal, man. You know, thank God for this message. It, it changed everything. Like I say, it, it, all the misunderstandings of, you know, I, I'll never have a, be able to have a true partnership with another human being. I used to tell my sponsees that, you know, you have the inability to form a true partnership with another human being. That's bullshit, man. You know, self has the, total yeah. inability right you know and, and once you see that even if you just see it from there you know everything that goes along with the sex inventory just just goes away man you know yeah. I, I'm, I'm not i wasn't responsible for what i did but I, i'm accountable you know so i had to go through the amends and everything else and the inventory and all that which yeah. I, you know right which yeah. i did for years man every time i was in in trouble you know or feeling bad do another inventory and i beat myself to death with the fourth step you know and the result yeah. i get a little relief but then you know the next day it's back because you don't know it's back yeah well the thing is that which is playing god can't really play a a, a role of the good god <laughs> yeah it's got a it's got a sort of nasty nature underneath it. It tends to uh, <laughs> yeah. its uh, nature prickly. Uh, yeah. Quickly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, man. Uh, so you see, let's say a friend of mine, he, there was a lot going on he was unaware of. He had like 13 sponsees. 
he did all this service and he had a nervous breakdown because who was who was having those sponsees was this idea of self who was doing all this great service was this idea of self claiming it all and in the midst of what you would look as a, a re, relieving the problem it was reinforcing the problem yeah till he had a complete fuck he just broke down yeah and uh and then thank God he saw it anew, more was revealed, and he saw exactly what we're talking about today. Yeah. Uh, that the playing God kept playing God, it just tried to be a better, different God. Yeah. Right, exactly. It's nasty, you know, storm fucking tsunami wave God wasn't hadn't worked. So now it adapted to the new condition and then he tried to become a good God. A perfect God, yeah. and of course, a lot of fucking elephants grew in the room while it was acting like <laughs> it was a perfect God. And, you know, the shit was undeniable after a certain point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the thing. All our failures can be great successes because they they can reveal something hopefully about what we're not to what we are finally. So what we are finally start seeing all this shit about what we're not. And then there's a distinction there. And you can be free even though the self isn't. You can be relieved even though the self is incredibly agitated. You, know, you, you will now be the underlying condition, not the after condition, yeah? Self will not be the underlying condition anymore. You will be. And then there'll be something called selfing that tends to have, and you learn more and more about it. Yeah, you do. And hopefully, and all the knowledge you have of self is it's not you. And that to me is the gold key. Yeah, because then you can surrender self. It's not you. Then you can lose interest in that which is playing God. And it's playing God with our godlike juice. So that's it. when that juice is is taken back. It's you see through it much more clearly because it's it's where the production value of its presentation, our faith and our belief in it is what's making it seem to be so. Yeah, yeah. So we our consent gets withdrawn. You know. Hmm. And therefore, it can't manufacture all the fucking misery it used to. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, over years and years of living on this new basis, uh, you give up the things that everything's going to be great. And none of that is true. It's going to it. What happens is you just travel lighter through whatever life has in store for you. Yeah. Sickness doesn't mean you're bad or anything. It does, none of this shit that we thought meant all this shit. It doesn't mean it. It means this is just the way things go here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have, you know, uh, Toyotas are reliable, but they're going to break down. Yeah. Yeah. Everything does here. That's just the way it goes. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> you can be agreement with that and be able to swim with it or you want or you can take a i'm gonna fight this battle yeah well yeah i just i'd rather just go with the flow eh? it works it's a much uh yeah it's yeah uh, so yeah so i thank you john yes yeah man i thank you buddy you know you said one time this this really helped me man you know and uh the, the pathway of destination. You know, I was relying on what was unreliable as what was unreliable to take me to the spiritual destination, you know, and man, you said that that one day and I was like, wow, man, that's what, that's exactly what I was doing, man. I was, I was identifying as that which was playing God, as that which had defeated me and relying on that, which is never in the now to take me to the present moment, you know, and, and, and find the spiritual ground. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, 
I, you, you made the analogy of uh, the pathway of expression instead of the pathway of destination. And you can talk on that, dude. That was that was really cool, you know. And you know to explain. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because we're assuming that you are a spirit's condition. We're not assuming yes. that you have to have one from from the mental conditions point of view. From the mental condition point of view, you need to have a spiritual condition, but as a mental condition. I see the spiritual condition becomes obvious when the interest in the mental condition diminishes. So you are actually what you're looking for, as St. Francis said. Yeah, what's looking is what you're looking for. So uh, you're looking for spirituality. That's what's looking. <laughs> <laughs> that's what looking when you're looking for spirituality spirit is looking <laughs> is what's looking so what's looking is what you're looking for yeah now not like it after you fulfill 80 mental requirements no now this is the assumption well that my life is based on actually now that you are the condition you would like to achieve so to speak you are that condition. It's not going to look like the way you thought, think it would look like. Thank God. It may look quite ordinary, which doesn't interest the mental condition much. Yeah. They may, you may not have spiritual parades thrown at you. You may not even have a lasting loving gaze. You know, <laughs> you may not, your hair may not get longer and straighter and robes become part of your uh, fashion statement. None of that. You just, no one may ever recognize you <laughs> as a spiritual giant. <laughs> That's the humility they were talking about. Yeah. 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 It's cool, man. You don't have to go to the great heights. Dog shit awareness gives you a very clear view. Very clear view. It does. Yeah. It's, you're always on... It wasn't something you achieved. It was. It can't be something you can lose. Yeah. So, I don't think there's a spiritual malady. I think it's a mental malady, Amen. and it's just over con too much concern and interest in it. Just uh, the system itself doesn't realize uh, the harm it's do doing itself. The mental interest can have acumen and clarity if it's a right-sized activity, but it's gorged itself with interest and attention, and it's got it addicted to this idea of being a person, a thing that's doing and doing and doing all this shit, this, I, this idea of self, it's gotten addicted to it. And it just wants more interest and attention. It just, and it's, the amount of interest and attention isn't helping it. It's actually, mutating it into some weird shit yeah but it can't stop that's what you need to recognize self is not going to get that it can't get out of self it doesn't get it it will just every time it's presented with evidence it hasn't worked it just slips out the side door with i can it, well i'll just manage better or i'll find a different teacher or i'll i'll mix yoga with fucking tantra or whatever it just refuses just to fucking, because it can't. It's not AI. It's not growing in awareness. Self is a program. It has a limited amount of information and data, and it's, it bounces off conscious contact with that data and information. It doesn't, it doesn't grow much. It, it doesn't have uh, an infinite set of possibilities, yeah? And definitely, we, hopefully most of us have realized it doesn't get, yeah, it, it keeps trying to get out of self as self. I mean, how many failures has happened? Did it ever learn? No, something, let's call it the innermost did, finally. In other words, the innermost, the unsuspected inner resource would be pointing at us as something that's not suspected from self yeah but we've now we have we can get that self can't get out of self self cannot get that it doesn't it'll just keep on fucking keeping on 
but we and you and I can see it because we're not self. We can see the futility of the system trying to get out of the system. Yet that's its drive. Yeah, can't do it. It wants a better self, definitely. It wants to get out of this self, da, da, da. But all the while, it's stuck to this idea of self. It calls you Paul, and it figures Paul is different than self, so Paul can escape self. But Paul at this moment is AKA self. Yeah. So when Paul is constantly trying to get out of self, with the clearer lenses, you would see self trying to get out of self. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, you know, just like when you meet a lot of alcoholics, you don't meet Jim, Mary, Sue, Bill. That has no influence at that moment. It's alcoholism you're talking to. It is. Yeah. And you want to just, you just want to try to give it the same old, same old. Hey, after 30 minutes of how fucked they are, hey, go to a meeting, which makes absolutely no sense to the logic that's directing them. But we know better. Yeah, we know what works. And I can tell the alcoholic their life, their destiny, without knowing them at all, as Bill has seen. If they are active and alcoholic and they've reached a certain point, we could write their story. They could just mail it in. The same shit's going to happen. They're going to go into rehabs. They're going to go to institutions. They're going to probably die, maybe be brought back. It's just going to go on and on, like it always does. Yeah. I'm going to a rehab tomorrow night in in New Jersey. I'm going to be doing some stuff there for four days. So, yeah. You ever watch a movie, Requiem for a Dream? It's very good. Check it out. Requiem for a Dream by uh, Ar uh, Aronofsky. Uh, he did The, the Wrestler and uh, Black Swan and stuff. It's a great movie. It's about the demise of people of with the uh, drugs and alcohol, uns unsuspecting and un and others. Yeah. It's pretty incredible movie. Requiem for a dream. Oh, well, Jillian uh, has her hand up from Novato, California. You ready for a question? Novato, California. Yeah, Novato. Come on in, Jillian. Oh, there she Hi, is. Paul. It's hey. Jillian. Hey, Jillian. How are you? I'm well. It's so good to see you. Yeah. I you finally found your channel. The, uh, you finally made it to the cave. I did. Yeah. I was cleaning my bookshelf the other day, and I have a grandson who is now climbing on everything. So I had to clean all my bookshelves, and I found your books. Oh, great. And so I was like, oh, I've got to find him again, and I knew to look on YouTube. So here I am. I just really wanted to say hi. You actually answered my question. I I, I've been following you, listening to you for a couple of years, and I, I I feel like myself is still trying to find myself, you know, but every now and then, you said it, I think yesterday, um, <clears throat> I can smell the food, but I'm turned away from it, so I can't quite put my hand on it, but what I've noticed about <clears throat> excuse me, myself and my relationships are, there's a lot of people falling away. Like, I don't have the tolerance to listen to the bullshit anymore. And I, I just, I've just noticed that, like, since the <laughs> end of the pandemic. So I don't know what to think or do about that. I have a couple of girlfriends that I'm just like, yeah, that I'm not feeling like I'm getting anything out of the relationship or I don't even know what to say about it really other than the fact that my relationships all seem to be changing the more I under the more I'm really me and not myself yes well that's a usually that's can happen and it's not the end all of it yeah more stuff occurs and then you have uh, in relationships with, with other people. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff gets revealed, you know, that's mm -hmm. all. 
I would follow what's being revealed and and see what uh, brings about a lot of uh, consideration because it's most of that's not you, you know? Yeah. It's what led me here today, following that, you know, just, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. I mean, if you, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And you know, there's, it's, we're on a dance floor and sometimes you dance with people and maybe for years, but the music stops and your partners may change. Mm -hmm. I got it. Do you yeah. still live in Nevada? I do. I still live in the same house that I've been okay. here for a while, six or seven okay. years. Yeah, I still do, to, at least today, anyway. Are you going, yeah. do you go to any in-person meetings? I do. I go to Navi Drive at 12. On uh, Thursdays and Fridays? Yeah. I went last Wednesday, and uh, oh, Wednesday. I'm leaving tomorrow night, so I'm not going, I'm not going today because I have two talks today here. But yeah, I went there on uh, Friday and I went there on Wednesday. Wednesday was packed. So if you like okay. people, there, yeah, it was nice. I'll look like, for you sometime. The Monday isn't a good, the Monday used to have a weird format. I I don't know if they've ever changed, but I don't go there on Monday. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, call me well, It's up. good to see you. Yeah, I'd yeah, love to. Go on the website, there's my phone number. Just give me a ring. Okay. We can All right, we'll do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Thanks, Jillian. Hey, Paul, Donovan has his hand up. Donovan, come on in. Hey, guys. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Hey, good. Good. So um, I came in a couple years ago, and I remember one of the first things that I said was, uh, you know, I was sitting here, and for the first time, I kind of saw the alcoholic mind and, and motion and how it was taking me down a river and uh and you said yeah man that's that's the thief uh but you got to see that that's the policeman is looking at that and you're neither of those two things um so i was wondering today if you could give some general characteristics of some of the uh you know nets how am i trying to word this some of the characteristics of the thief and the policeman for maybe some broad strokes of um maybe i can easily recognize them better or maybe yeah. somebody else could. Well, I only can describe the thief in my own neighborhood and the policeman in my own neighborhood. So the policeman was captured by a statement when I was young. So the policeman was what first appeared, not the thief. Yeah. So the policeman was described in one way. I remember my father got very ill when I was about six. And it was going to affect his participation with the kids, yeah. So I was the youngest of four kids. And so my mother talked to me about it, and she brought the doc, our, our doctor, Dr. Gianquinto, to talk to me about it. And I understood what they were saying, but my reaction in me was, what did I do to cause my father not to want to play with me? Okay, so... and inordinate amount of responsibility sort of like if i walk in a room and someone yawned i thought it was because i came into the room yes so this extreme i've got to be perfect yes just a weird weird uh like a surveillance over any kind of behavior had to be weighed yeah and i was young and i was starting to i it was affecting what I call playing quite a lot because there was a lot of self-awareness. Yeah. I was just looking at me doing whatever was going on and reviewing it ad nauseum. The head was. Yeah. So this, I lived under that. And a lot of my behavior was like a song and dance to keep people away from what I thought was an empty hole. And so the policeman had that job, yeah. So not not draw much attention towards me, just keep it. And then it, that thing just got, was like a pressure cooker and something had a blow. And then that's what happened when I had found my first drink when I was 12. And uh, the thief became dominant, yes, quickly. 
And the thief was great in the sense that it was relief from the policeman. Yes, I got relief from the policeman, which in a sense was, uh, and the relief from the policeman was so important to me, my drinking and using, one of the aspects I had in that was I was willing to pay any consequence tomorrow not to feel uncomfortable now. So I was do anything not to have that policeman take over again, so to speak. But the thief has a lot of disadvantages because when I started to drink, I realized I have magnetic appeal to people in uniform. I attracted a lot of shit, yeah? And so the thief had its run, but it was unbearable because of the consequences and a lot of other stuff, yeah? So then finally I got a... I got washed up on the shores of AA, got struck sober. Yeah. And so the the effects of the thief, I wasn't doing what I was doing so much. And then very, very uh, slowly, the policeman came, crept in and started walking the beat of my recovery. And it was just fucking, you know, I've got to be perfect. I got to help every fucking person you know, all this shit. And it was just way too much. Yet, the st I was never going to go back to drink again and to drugs. And that was what, that was the, basically the whole uh, generator of the thief. So I got stuck in this policeman thief situation. Yeah. And I, for the first four or five years in recovery, I was under my own surveillance. You know, the policeman was watching me. And I got a little bit of relief, but he was it was still there. And then I found out there was a possibility that I was neither, that I didn't have to listen to me to not to listen to the policeman. I'd have to be the thief. And for me to not to listen to the thief, I'd have to listen to the policeman. I found a, a, I was placed in a position of neutrality, like it says in recovery. Yeah, neither policeman nor thief. And that's worked. That's what's allowed. Because I, as the policeman and as the thief, I've been wanting to escape here since I was six years old. I mean, I was just fucking wanting to get out of both aspects, <laughs> whatever they were. And uh, being placed in that position of neutrality, I found relief from both through neither. Yeah. Yeah. So... I'm not being directed by the policeman nor the thief. I hear both of their little narrations, but I'm not I'm not driven by them. I'm driven by something else. I don't give that a name, yeah, and it definitely doesn't have a uniform. And uh, yeah, that's how it goes. So if you feel like you got to be perfect, uh, you got to be the perfect meditator. You've got a big stick up your ass. I would say that's the policeman. And then when, you know, the unbearability of that triggers you have to fucking act out and usually do something really stupid, that would be the thief, so to speak. Yes? Yeah, yeah perfect. Good stuff. You know, it's like you, another one that was really good, and I appreciate that, Paul. That, that was good. Uh, um, was, you know, knowledge of self, um, Self-knowledge of is nothing, but knowledge of self is everything, right? And, yes. And yes. describing the policeman and the thief, uh, that's the inner workings of self. Uh, yeah. And, you know, what I'm what I'm seeing is landing on, I'm just, uh, I'm aware of that today. It's just landing in awareness of that. Great, great. And see, this goes into the idea of non-duality. The duality yes. of thief policeman, and that there's a negation of that. So... You don't need to have one nor the other. You don't need to rehab one and loosen the uh, the, the belt of the other. You, you can have a freedom from both. Yes. Yeah. Which I didn't see as a possibility. It wasn't being, I wasn't running into it, so to speak. And uh, yeah. I mean, see, let's say you're able to see that you're playing God. Okay. So that's the parameter or the dimension of the football field you're on. But that's that's the end. So 
now you're trying to rehab that which was playing God and play a better God. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's the end of the, the field. I think you can go back farther and see uh, you're not that which is playing God. And it, the process may look like, unbeknownst to you, you're playing God. Uh, and then you realize, so that you that was playing God, which isn't us, but unbeknownst, it was just doing its thing, playing God. Then it was pointed out. So now that you that was playing God wants to play a better God. And then, all right. And then you realize something's off with that shit. And then you see it, A, it may not be you. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's about yeah, no, it's as gonna, I think you need to go, really. Yeah, no, it's constantly going to try and put a new paint of coat on, right? Like you mentioned. Yeah, it's constantly going to try and reinvent it's gonna, itself. It's going to keep appearing. This yeah, isn't yeah, about stop. you becoming a super hybrid, neither policeman, neither thief, but still something. No, this isn't a better you. This is seeing you're not that you that needs to get better. And there's a loss of interest in it. And that's how the whole system gets much, much better. Yes. Yes. I'm just, this is all reverse engineering. I've just, I've been given a lot of relief and I can see why I didn't have the relief. Yeah. Probably I am seeing it because I have a seat assignment to share it so that other people can see it. It's not because I was special and I could see it. It was meant to be used and I'm available to be used. So I get to see it, <laughs> literally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if it was all about me, I would I'd still be seeing shit probably. Yeah. But this has been the little journey and I try to share it. And I and I feel it's not unusual. And you can reverse engineer stuff or stuff can be reverse engineered and we can share that. And you can see that uh, by looking at your role in life, you'll see something else's role in your life. Yeah? And, and then you tell the truth about that and you gain knowledge of self. And the knowledge of self tells you you're not self. Yeah. Self-knowledge tells you you're very knowledgeable. <laughs> knowledge of self tells you you're not, not you're not self. That's its that's its intent, its purpose. Yeah. <laughs> They're distinctly going in a different direction. So yeah. I think a lot of us have acquired knowledge of self. Now, if we can match it with an understanding, it may take us farther than before. Yeah. But just, you know, yeah. You know, like when I want to have pumpkin pie, I'm gluten-free. And so sometimes you can get a gluten-free pie crust, which takes away a lot of the shit for the pumpkin pie. And then you get the pumpkin pie faster in a way. But the thing is, most of the pie crusts, are, they suck. So what we're trying to do is have a really tasty understanding and then just put the ingredients here of your life. Yeah. And because the speed isn't, you haven't lost the taste of anything you've actually, and you get the speed of its effect. Yeah. So I feel like exactly that the pie crust is great, but they usually suck. In this case, I feel we're given a pretty nice pie crust. Pour your life into it and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it, you know, Paul. One of the things is, you know, it's like, you know, and, and, and you know, I'm constantly um, um, saying some of the stuff I've, I've heard here and you know, it's like, you know, I'm not, you know, what the steps have showed me, I'm not managerial material, right? And yeah. then, and then the, the latest one I'm kind of going with is that, you know, the same movie theater, you know, that was, that was showing the shit show, uh, you know, is now showing a life that I'm, that I'm happy to live. And, and that's because of a new employer, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, and, and it's a beautiful thing, you know, it's a beautiful and thing. And also, the seats point in a different direction in the one theater. Yeah. 
which is the whole yeah. it makes a huge difference <laughs> yeah. yeah in other words you have good orderly direction the direction is clear which is nice yeah there's been an establishment of a recognition of some facts in the life of the action figure. One of them, it's powerless over any alcohol or drug. So if I if an alcohol or drug comes in me, there's basically I don't know what could happen. Yeah. And I'm not managerial quality. That has been a fact in this life for a long time. I was not in agreement with that fact for a long time. I fought that and I lost. And this is just coming into an agreement with the situations that are at hand. Yeah. <laughs> and and because uh, when you argue with reality, you're going to lose, so to speak. So <laughs> this is the thing. This is the easiest, softer way. Yeah. So now the facts are the same, but I'm in compliance with them and life works a lot better. Yeah. So. I feel this whole program will put you in compliance with what is and how things really are. Yeah. And to me, you know, we're masses of change, but most of our change wasn't directed by a clear fucking point of view. So it was chaotic. And But what AA does is directed direction, but direction, which is growth. It's directed change. So it changes us, but there's a direction in it, and it's growth, yeah? Did you grow using? I didn't grow that much. I was emotionally no. frozen. I was just, uh, <laughs> I, I would say, you know, I did the same thing over and over again, thousands and thousands of times. It didn't seem like I grew that much, yeah? Lots of change, yeah, but not much growth. Now... Uh, there isn't that much change, and there's a lot of growth. It's pretty good. Yeah, when when Self was running the show, I was crawling around the carpet looking to smoke a piece of lint. And, you know, when my higher power is running the show, I got to take the twins over to Spain uh, this summer. Yeah, exactly. I'll, so, I'll take the ladder. So, yeah, thank the you, upgrade, Paul. It's good to see you. Upgrade's amazing, yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Thanks, Donovan. I don't see any other hands, Paul. No. All Good right. stuff, man. Let's start saying goodbye to everyone. Eh? So, Amen. Oh, wait. First of all, there's not a meeting when's tomorrow night. So if anyone's interested, we'll be traveling. So, And we're going to not have the Thursday morning meeting. And that's the only two we miss. There'll be Saturday. Zoom will be on. And uh, we're going to be in, in a... Back East, if anyone's around there, we're going to be giving talks, well, Thursday, Friday, but uh, it, the, the open to the public are Saturday and Sunday. And it's in New Jersey and two different places. We have two talks on Sunday. One's going to be pure non-duality, whatever, you know, at one o'clock and the other one's at six in Dover. So if you're interested, I think it's all up on the website. And my number's there. And I, we have a number of people going to meet and we're going to have dinner before the talks and shit and stuff. And uh, if you come on Friday night and you say, it's, I'm Paul's friend, they may let you in. I, I've got a certain, I've got, I've, I've gotten three people in already. So, yeah. It could be based on your donation, but I'm not, I'm just giving you a hint. Could work out. <laughs> All right, so Michael, yeah, so those two days, Wednesday night, tomorrow, that's all, and Thursday morning, yeah, we'll have this next week, everything, hopefully. All right, John, thank you so much for your share and your and your run in the show. Yep. A pleasure, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Kathleen G., you have my phone number, yeah? Just give I'll me I'll call you number. Saturday, Paul. Yeah. I'll call you Saturday, okay? Yeah. Call me Saturday. I'll be around. Okay. All right. We got Walter. Walter. We got Andrew. Andrew Allswell on the on the uh, the externals. Yeah, I'm doing eight and nine right now. I'm, I'm moving through. Oh, great, great. Yeah. Adam, 
Nice to see you. Rob in Kentucky. Yes. Tom in Denver. Hey, he has resurfaced. Nice to see Tom. Rick Rowe in Toronto. Gary C. in Placerville. Nice to see him. Gary's feeling much better, I can tell. Great. Mia, I think Mia's coming back to America. She's in Greece still, yes? Yeah. Friday. I'm flying via oh. you. So oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> I don't know where you'll be, but I'll wave hello. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just don't don't throw anything out of the plane. No, don't do that. <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll, I'll see you when I get back. Yeah. That sounds right. great. Thank all right, you. Rico, Miss, Mr. Cruz, nice to see you. Yes. Al in Vegas. Reed. I don't know. I can't see you clearly. There he is. Nice to meet you, Reed. Joseph C., Kathy, as always. We've got uh, Roman. Roman, my friend. Another friend, Oliver in Berlin. John K., Nina, holding the fort. Nina's going to hopefully come up here in December. Yes. I bought my ticket. Oh, great. We'll see yes. you guys. We'll have it all. We'll set something up and stuff. Yeah. Barina, another a lovely German lass. There she is. Steve C. down in San Diego. Kimia, I don't know exactly where she is, but nice to see her. Uh, we've got uh, Lynn B., another lovely cloud. I like these. Fletch. Uh, Alex in Toronto. Elliot, I'll see you Friday, Elliot. Eh? Hopefully, call me. Call me on the on Friday in the day, and we can meet for. We'll, we'll go for dinner maybe, or after the meeting. Yeah, I will do. That. Sure. Right, good. Uh, I think that's about it. Listen, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for this. We'll be here at four thirty Pacific time for another meeting. You want to join us uh, today, and uh, thank you, thank you for this opportunity. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Oh, thank.